Family ancestry, many times if you want to know who you are, you have to look back into your family's history, your parents, grandparents, even great grandparents. But some people can't have those conversations and have to rely on historical documents to learn about their family history. Our in-depth reporter Anthony Hill takes a look at the role black owned newspapers played in preserving that history and how one local library is now trying to make it easier to access that information. This is my dad and my mom. I would say this picture was right before my father went to the walk. Carolyn Collins has fond memories of her father, a West Tampa native, World War II veteran, and longshoreman. He was a source of inspiration and a helping hand for many in his community. Carrying a lot of young men in the West Tampa area down to uh, the dock to get them on and get them started and encouraging them. And though Carolyn is able to tell his story, Many other black people depend on historical documents to learn more about their own family history. Our obituaries was always in the uh, African-American papers, Florida Sentinel, Weekly Challenges, etc. Local black papers were instrumental in recording much of African-American history, including reporting about those in the community who had passed away. Everybody really waited to get the Friday Sentinel so that they would get all of the listings of those individuals who had passed. Carolyn says to this day, many African Americans from Tampa who now live in other parts of the country depend on local black owned papers to know about friends and community members who have died. And guess what? They're not only getting it now where it's mail, they're getting digital. I like to make a distinction between the obituary and the funeral programs. Tammy Ozier is the president of the Atlanta chapter of the Afro-American Historical and Genealogical Society. She says another document used to paint a historical picture of black life are funeral programs, essentially pamphlets with a description of the deceased. That usually gives you the story of the person. Um, who, where were they born? Who were their parents? Who were some of their siblings? She says there's a movement to make these documents more accessible. You can find all across the United States some efforts where different libraries or archives or even individuals are actually going about digitizing funeral programs of African Americans. And she says many of those programs can be accessed through Google. She also recommends searching for deceased black Americans by expanding your geographical search outside of where the person died. And maybe um, this is someone who is a hometown person in Tampa, but they lived in New York. Um, don't don't be, you know, try to go to different places where a person may have gone. The C. Blythe Andrews Jr. Public Library in Tampa is trying to keep local black history alive. They have an entire room dedicated to a collection by the Florida Sentinel Bulletin newspaper, and the collection dates back to the 1940s. It just highlighted local um, African-American history that you wouldn't see in other media outlets. With the help of an archivist, people can view old articles and photos of what was happening in the black community in the Bay Area. We had a family come in and was looking for a grandfather who played football at Middleton High School. So yeah, and they were able to find the picture because they didn't have a name. In addition to viewing old media, people can also read obituaries. They're currently in the process of digitizing their collection. So that way everybody can have access, not just in Tampa, but people who have lived here and moved in other places. I've posted links to databases that have digital obituaries and funeral programs on abcactionnews.com. In East Tampa, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.